All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. I know what you're thinking. This is a gargantuan pistol. This thing is humongous. Look at it. I mean, it's as big as a Desert Eagle. It's an H&K Mark 23. We had some really interesting stuff planned for the intro of this video, which unfortunately we weren't able to do it. We were supposed to like put on this like Navy SEAL get up and like come up out of the water and really show this thing like doing what it's doing. Maybe we'll think of something different for the future, but I don't know. One can really dream, I guess, as to how that would have turned out. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, well, it, it loses me. But anyway, we're going to be talking about the Mark 23 today. Awesome, awesome gun. Let's shoot it a little bit and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. We got a Liberty Cosmic uh, in place, so very quiet gun. Let's take a few shots with her. All righty. We'll see, the gun goes halfway to the target. That attributes to the accuracy a bit. It's so long that you're actually closing the distance between you and the enemy, and that's one reason it's so accurate. I can just about reach out and just tap them on the forehead. All right. Boy, it shoots exactly where it's looking to. All right, how about a couple down in the dirt, just so you can hear how quiet it is? Not bad. The ammo we're running is some uh, 230 grain Freedom Munitions Hush ammo, so nice and quiet. Not too shabby. Um, the Mark 23 is a really, really interesting pistol. Um, it was developed in the early 90s to fulfill a SOCOM contract. And the research and development and time that went into the development of this particular handgun is pretty extraordinary. And you know the Germans, they're very meticulous in everything that they do, both in engineering uh, and prototyping. They're, they're very meticulous when they build a gun. Uh, one of the really awesome features of this particular gun, it is a match grade pistol. So this gun will literally shoot the living daylights out if you get a good shooter behind it. It has a hammer forged barrel and the way that they actually develop the USP barrels and the Mark 23 barrels is a really specific hammer forging process that actually provides a just sick amount of accuracy. Every barrel is very consistent from one to the other and uh, they're just awesome. The finish they use on this is really, really impervious to salt water. It's kind of like their semi-gloss um, epoxy paint, I guess, would, is what you would equate it to. It's like an epoxy-based paint. Uh, it is a polymer frame. The controls on the gun, in my opinion, are a little goofy. Uh, you do have a hammer drop right here on the left side of the frame. You squeeze it down, and it drops the hammer. So you can carry it with the hammer down if you wish, or you can carry it single action, cocked and locked, with the safety engaged. So there's two different uh, settings there. Instead of having just a lever, you could sweep down and bring the hammer into double action only or down into double action mode like you would on a USP. There's a separate lever for it, which I guess this giant pistol, they needed to have, find some way to use all that, uh, that real estate up on the gun itself. It is a very large gun. You notice the fact that the gun has a very large uh, trigger guard. That's because of gloved fingers uh, military, as a military pistol. If this uh, gun is going to be used in Arctic conditions or really cold conditions where a soldier might be wearing some really thick gloves, they needed a very generous sized area for that gloved finger to be able to fit into the trigger guard of the pistol. The 16 by 1 right hand thread uh, on this gun is fitted uh, with a Liberty Cosmic. Now the original guns actually had suppressors that were specially designed by Knight's Armament. Of course, we don't have that suppressor here. They also designed a special laser aiming module. And of course, I don't have it here, but this is huge module that, I mean, this thing is big enough as it is, um, but there's a threaded portion on the front of the trigger guard where the laser aiming module is actually designed to go onto the gun. At first, I always thought that the sights on these things were a little bit crude, just because for the size of the actual slide itself, they are a little bit on the thin side and they're not really wide. But the sights actually do pick up quite well. The trigger is excellent on this gun. And I tell you, there's just not a lot of videos about the Mark 23 out there because really, H&K doesn't make a ton of them that end up winding up in the US. Um, they make a few of these guns, but it's not a real popular seller here in the United States like people would think. They really just don't run a ton of these guns. Um, 
The grip texture is really not overly bad. You know, and the weird thing is, is this gun is touted as an offensive pistol. That was uh, the, the vein of the way that the contract was originally perceived with SOCOM. They wanted a gun that fit a strict criteria and was intended to be an offensive pistol in that, hey, we're going to clear a building or a room or we're going to do this or we're going to do that or there's some mission specific capability that they determined they needed this. So that's kind of one of those interesting footnotes. Um, you know, these guns are great. They're not real, real common, so we thought we would uh, just play with it some. I'm gonna shoot some groups, and we're just gonna have some fun. Hopefully I can do the gun some justice because these things absolutely pit the ace. I'm gonna do my best for you guys. All right, now that's just me kind of wrapping them out and I'm using the bolt on that plate as a point of aim. Honestly, that group is not even good. This gun will literally put them all in one hole at this kind of range. This gun is supposed to shoot a two inch group at 25 yards. I don't know if I can quite do that good, but um, man, I tell you, something that would be really fun with this gun in my opinion is if there was some way to attach like maybe a shoulder stock to it I know that seems kind of silly, but if it is an offensive pistol like they're calling it, why not have a shoulder stock attachment? That would make this gun really controllable and all of that accuracy that you're getting out of this gun, and it's just so killer. I mean, you've got carbine-like accuracy out of this thing. Why waste all that accuracy in a handgun when this could be like maybe even like a modular carbine? They could make this thing just design the lower frame of this gun, you know, to be a little short stocky carbine or something, okay? And up here, maybe add like a forward grip, something small to be able to control it. And then add you like a 20 or 25 shot mag. Now you're talking. And it really, in my opinion, they, they might have missed the mark there. Now granted, okay, I'm not so calm and I don't know what the contract was really intended for in terms of what they were looking to do. But just from the outside looking in as a consumer and just me being the guy that I am, this gun needs to be a carbine. It would be so awesome. And the gun is already just exuberantly expensive already. What's a few more dollars to just make it all that much cooler? Of course, that's my humble opinion. I'm not talking down on the gun because it's awesome, but that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Man, this thing is just crazy. Guys, this gun is just, it's nuts. I mean, I, I love this thing, it is crazy. I mean, if you're a movie star or a guy in a video game or something, like, you've gotta have this gun. Like, to me, it just, it fits that type of niche, you know? I can see why it's a really awesome gun that shows up in so many different popular places like that. And it's just a very large and impressive gun, which is really cool. Um, we're gonna shoot a little bit more. Hopefully I'm doing it some justice in the accuracy department. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding guys, these things will straight up shoot. That was me. Pretty much if you miss, it's you. <laughs> Just going to get that in your mind right now. And uh, they're not kidding, man. When they say these things are match grade, they are match grade. Every single person I've let shoot this gun is just blown away at the accuracy. 
It better be for what it costs too. All right, how about a series of headshots? Nick Tim. I mean, come on. How about the gopher down there? <clears throat> I mean, come on. You know, this thing is just killer. Very impressive in size. <laughs> I mean, just a big gun. It's long and heavy and... It's like a Desert Eagle in terms of overall size. So if you ever put a Desert Eagle in your hand, you see just how big of a gun it is. This thing is definitely right in there in terms of size and length and everything and the overall feel. Definitely lighter. I mean, the polymer frame definitely uh, cuts down on the weight a good bit. Um, but they did a great job with this handgun. It, it's a shame that they're not more commonly available and that they're not, uh, you know, cheaper. It is a very expensive gun. In fact, this one's a loner. I don't own it. Uh, I'd probably never buy something like this. Uh, I did borrow it. But it is a neat gun, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to let Chad have a go because this thing just shoots so well. Um, I, I just can't wait to see something like this. You know, maybe we'll find a way to SBR one of these things just for fun. And we're going to put that whole thing to the test. Like, what would a Mark 23 SBR look like? Maybe we'll make one, I tell you. So, we'll see. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Chad. We're going to clean the range up. This thing is just great. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few shots of the Mark 23 here. And, uh, you know, Eric was pretty much praising this gun to kingdom come. But I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be a little bit of a turd, and I've got a few negative things to say about it. I love this gun. I really do. And like Eric said, it's a loner. And uh, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to think about it when we first got it. But, man, literally, when you pull the trigger on it, it's such a smooth shooting gun, and the accuracy is just so phenomenal. It, it kind of changes your mind about the whole platform uh, for a moment. But anyways, I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. God, that thing is huge. All right, let's see. Oh, that was definitely me. I oh, know, I think we broke our gopher. I think we broke him. The gun shoots just so well, it's not even funny. Dude, ridiculous. <laughs> I mean... It's crazy how good this thing shoots. It's just nuts. Like I said, when we first got them in, I didn't really know what to think about it, but you know, I own an FNX 45 Tactical and so does Eric. And uh, I've had that gun for eh, maybe a year and a half or so now. Eric's had his for a few years, but you know, I bought that gun for less than a thousand bucks. You know, and you get 15 shot mags, three mags with the gun, and they retail for about $1,200. This gun retails for about two, if not more than that. And the magazines, although they could stuff a lot more in there than HK does, these are 12 shot mags. And these are the, these are the law enforcement mags. The restricted mags are only 10 shots. You got this huge gun and 10 shots of 45 ACP. I mean, come on. Plus these mags cost double, if not more than the FNX 45 tactical mag. So from a non-military standpoint, I mean, we're not so calm. We're not military or anything like that. I mean, well, Eric's a vet, but this gun just as a civilian type gun, it's just a showpiece. And that's why they've been using movies and stuff so much It's because they are an awesome gun. They look good in the movie, but from a practicality standpoint, I, I just really couldn't see personally owning this particular firearm when an FNX 45 does everything I need it to do and then some and is a wonderful suppressor host. But the FNX doesn't come anywhere close in the accuracy department. I mean, th this gun just, it shoots the living daylights out. I'm gonna shoot a group at about 40 yards back there and just see, I haven't even shot it that far yet, but it's just so crazy how good this thing shoots. 
I just stacked two shots on top of each other at like 40 yards. How is that even possible? I don't even shoot that good. All right. All right, I might change my mind about wanting one of these. Oh, that was me. Right over the top of the head. Right over the top of his head. It's disturbing how accurate that gun is, Chad. It's nuts. It really is. Damn, the 12 shot mags, though, just kills me. <clears throat> Eric compared this to a Desert Eagle earlier. You know, I used to own a, uh, a 357 Desert Eagle with uh, 50A and 44 mag barrels. And uh, although the weight isn't uh, the same, of course, I mean, the Desert Eagle is like a 60 ounce gun. It's ridiculous. But this gun, in size comparison, it's like holding a Desert Eagle. It's just, it fills the hand. I mean, Kevin is a bigger guy, and he felt like this gun really fits his hand well. But his hand, I mean, he can like wrap around a basketball. You know, he's got them big old bear mitts. But um, I don't know. It just, I'm still not 100% sold on it. But man, when you when you pull the trigger, it's just, it's just crazy. Oh, I took out one of our sodas. Oh no! Gotta watch that spall. Oh. Pfft. Oh, and that was me. The trigger's phenomenal. I mean, it's got a really, really nice trigger. It's almost kind of two stageish in a way. It comes back and it stops, and it's just got a really, really clean break without any like sloppiness to it or any kind of staginess. Got a little bit of over travel, but man, I bet if they had like an over travel stop in this thing, oh boy. I mean, God dang, man. Uh -oh. Get back there. Big old honking thing. And we're just having fun with this thing. I mean, this isn't a review. We're just out here showing this gun off and just getting a chance to shoot it and all. I think Eric said that HK makes like 12 of these a year. Is that right? Not many. Not many at all. Not for the U.S. market anyway. No, not for the U.S. market. All right, take out some soda pops. <laughs> I just love, I love the way 45 sounds when it hits the soda suppressed. Or when it doesn't. There we go. Look at them soda swinging. Get out of here. All right, there's still a little bit left in the bottom there. Oh, man. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at that one down there. Get out of here. Dude. Hush ammo's running great. Cosmic's doing a good job. If you guys don't know about this can, it's 45 ACP. But uh, if you know from previous videos, I love Liberty's products. They're based out of Georgia here, but you can run 22 long rifle all the way up to uh, 450 Bushmaster, 458 SOCOM out of this can. Pretty cool. All right, let's see. Let go fear. One more time. Dude, it's just ridiculous. Uh oh, no. Get out of here. Take our popper out back there. Oh, no. No. Waiting on a mag. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Gun ships with two mags, obviously. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get our popper back there. Uh oh, just to the right. There we go. <laughs> All right, about 40 yards, let's see. Right there, all right, 75 yards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I could sit out here all day and shoot this thing. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Actually, well, he's got one more mag. I'll shoot that last mag. I keep going back and comparing this thing to the FNX 45 Tactical. I mean, just a after we did the video initially with that gun of Eric's, and I went and found one on the used market, picked it up, and uh, it's a wonderful suppressor host. It's decently accurate, but I mean, I, I haven't really shot that many like super accurate guns. I mean, recently we did the video with the uh, the Nighthawk and Agency guns that were coming out and everything, and 
got to shoot literally, I mean, three, four thousand dollar, you know, 1911s. And those guns, I mean, they, they literally like the bullets are on rails. I mean, they really are. You just, you point the gun, you squeeze the trigger and it's going to go wherever the sights are. And if you suck, it's going to let you know real fast. And, uh, for being a polymer framed, you know, double action gun like this or DASA, I mean, just the way that, just the way that HK engineers this gun, the hammer forged barrel and stuff, and the, uh, the little O-ring seal right here, what this does, as far as I know, is actually help center the barrel inside the slide and bring it back to the same point every time, much like the bushing on like a 1911, how it, you know, if, if the bushing fitment isn't good, the gun's not gonna shoot all that great. The looser it is, the more reliable it might be, but the tighter the fit, the more accurate the gun's gonna be. So this kind of gives you that, that accuracy potential in um, you know, a polymer frame gun. We're gonna shoot the last mag here, but you know, as far as just going out and buying one, I don't know, that's, that's really up to you guys. But I won't be owning one anytime soon. My FNX fits the, uh, fits the bill just fine for me, but this is a lot of fun for sure. Let's see, we've got any targets that I haven't shot yet. We've got a little six inch popper back there. See if we can get past that uh, that swinging soda there, dude. No, right over the top. Oh, pfft. pull that one. Ridiculous. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this fun look at the uh, Mark 23. This is a gun that not a lot of people get to take a look at. I mean, there's, they're just not really out there because there's not really a big market for them here in the States because they are prohibitively expensive for a handgun. It's a little large, the magazine capacity is kind of, uh, it kind of sucks. It's kind of a detriment to the overall, like my overall like rating of the gun, if you will. I wish that the mags held, you know, 15 shots or possibly more. They made like extended magazines, but uh, overall the gun's awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, we got a lot more on the way. Hope you enjoy this look at a cool movie gun. See you guys.